GMA medical mystery. Thousands of Americans come down with Lyme disease every year. If left untreated, the infection can spread to your nervous system and even your heart. A California woman has been battling Lyme disease symptoms for more than a decade because it took years to get the right diagnosis. Finally, an experimental treatment put her on the path to recovery and gave her a chance at a normal life. They do have a good side and a bad side, Hal, in traffic today. Brooke Landau was the traffic reporter for ABC's KGTV 10 News in San Diego. We're getting a little better here on our freeways. You'd never know that for Brooke, life hasn't always been a smooth ride. I literally went to bed fine one night and woke up unable to move from the waist down and the neck up and had no idea why. It took seven years to find the answer. In 2001, Brooke learned she had Lyme disease, a bacteria spread by the bite of a tiny tick. Every year, about 20,000 Americans are diagnosed with Lyme disease, but only about 30% of those infected get the obvious symptoms of Lyme, a bullseye rash and flu-like symptoms. Without symptoms, the unlucky remainder never know they have the disease. By the time Brooke learned she had Lyme, it was too late. The bacteria was attacking her brain. Just about every organ of my body was affected by this. Since then, life has been an uphill battle. I lost hearing in my left ear. I began to lose my sight in both eyes. I develop gallstones, spinal meningitis, colitis, heart arrhythmia, palpitations. I had to contemplate things like just a lifetime of, of pain or death. One of Brooke's doctors says her case was among the worst he'd ever seen. These are all the pills that I would take in one day. And none of the pills cured her. Brooke says she's alive today because of one doctor who took a medical risk. They put a tube into an artery leading into my heart. The experimental treatment, not approved by the FDA, consisted of pumping high doses of antibiotics into her heart for 24 hours a day for two months. She also underwent 30 days of treatment in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Her doctors hoped by hyper-oxygenating all the tissue, it would allow the medication to penetrate much deeper and reach the organism. And that was the first time in seven and a half years that I started seeing signs of recovery. I got my hearing back in my left ear, my sight stabilized, I got my short-term memory back. That was the path to starting to recover. Recently, for the first time in a decade, Brooke received her first negative test result. The disease may be gone, but she will be dealing with its damage for years to come. I just pushed through it, but you know, I hope to God that it's not another 50, 60 years of this kind of pain. A medical mystery solved, though, as we heard, Brooke Lando still has a way to go, and she joins us live this morning. This is an incredible story. Why did it take seven years? for the correct diagnosis. The problem with Lyme disease is that there is no universal treatment or standard of care yet for this disease. In fact, there's not even a valid test. The, the blood test for Lyme disease is inaccurate 60% of the time. For so, so for seven and a half years, I had a negative blood test. You say that actually during that process, a lot of times doctors suggested to you it was all in your head? Yeah, and you know, that's not unusual in the Lyme community. There are hundreds of thousands of people with this disease. Uh, thousands of them email me and they've, you know, my story is horrifying, but they've had it upwards of 15, 20, 25 years and they're told that it's all in their heads and they're crazy. And we're talking about some of the, you know, most major uh, medical facilities in this country saying that. And you know that you were actually bitten by a tick in 1994. You actually remember this happening? Yeah, I remember pulling the tick off of me, but it wasn't until a year later that I had symptoms. I, I just went to bed one night absolutely fine, one year out of college, climbing the corporate ladder and uh, doing great, went to bed fine and wo woke up unable to move. So because your progression of the disease was relatively unusual, in addition to the un unreliability of that diagnostic, diagnostic test, you went for a long time wondering what was wrong with you. Right, and it's absolutely horrifying, not just for me, but for my family as well. I mean, my parents would have spent any amount of money or done anything and brought me anywhere to have helped me escape all of this years and years of pain, but that's the problem. There was nowhere to go and no amount of money uh, you know, can, can help somebody, can help a single family. I mean, I've spoken with 13-year-old children who were bitten when they were three or younger and 
have essentially never known a pain-free day in their entire lives. Well, this is very scary, so we want to give our audience some information mm -hmm. uh, so on how to avoid Lyme disease in the first place and how you can recognize those symptoms if you do get it. And here to talk about that is ABC's medical editor, Dr. Tim Johnson. And Tim, what is exactly Lyme disease, and do you only get it from ticks? It is a disease caused by a bacteria, a very special kind of bacteria. It is transmitted by deer ticks primarily. Deer ticks feed on other animals, pick it up, then they attach themselves to humans and start sucking on the blood. If it's attached more than 24 hours, you have a much greater chance of getting the actual Lyme disease from the tick. So the way to prevent this disease is a, to, to try to avoid ticks in the first place. And that's why we recommend that people who live in tick-infested areas wear long pants and uh, long shirts, tuck their pants into boots or wear long socks, that they use insect repellents that contain DEET, that's D-E-E-T, that they, uh, at the end of the day, examine themselves and their kids and their pets for ticks. Ticks are very small, but when they get engorged with blood, you can see them and you should pull them off very carefully with a tweezer, not squeeze them, but pull them gently off. All of those maneuvers are designed to get the disease in the first place, which is the best way to go. Right, but I mean, I, I have two young boys, and we did this over, over the summer. I mean, my husband and I would inspect for ticks every night, and very stressed out about whether or not we were going to see it. We don't want to use DEET and a repellent because we know that's dangerous yeah. for children. If, if I catch the tick really soon, do I prevent the disease? Does the tick have to be attached to a person for a day, or two days, or three days? In other words, can yes, you stop we think it has to be thing? attached for... It, we, we think it has to be attached for at least 24 hours, so the earlier you find it and pull it off, the, the much better. But when you do so, I think everybody should contact their physician, especially if they develop any telltale symptoms, which can include, of course, the rash that we talk about. Sometimes we call it a bullseye rash when it has a clear center. You get a lot of flu-like symptoms typically, meaning uh, headaches, fever, body aches, and pain, etc. If you live in a tick-infested area and you've been bitten by a tick or seen a tick, uh, even if you don't have any symptoms, uh, or if you have symptoms and you haven't seen a tick, either one, I say, uh, go to the doctor and consider being treated right away with antibiotics. All right. And how reliable quickly are those antibiotics, Tim? Well, if you're treated very early on with a two- to four-week course of antibiotics, the vast majority of people, I think, will be cured, as was apparently President Bush a year ago. He was treated for Lyme disease okay. with a course of antibiotics. The key is finding it early and treating it quickly. All right, Dr. Tim Brooke Landau, thank you so much thank for you. your story this morning thank and, you. Tim, for your information. Really important in the summertime when so many people are out and exposed to it. Absolutely. And you can learn more about Lyme disease at our website at abcnews.com.